Hey guys, welcome to our webinar. This is how to make profits with zero DTE SVX credit spreads. This is a 2023 strategy. Uh, I am going to be introducing some things that you probably haven't heard about or learned about. Hopefully we're going to provide a lot of value for you to understand the best way to trade uh, zero DTE. So uh, hopefully you're strapped in, ready to go. And here we go. Okay. So what can you expect today? I'm going to show you how you can make consistent returns monthly based on margin capital risk by adjusting trades too without taking large losses and making profitable returns. What you're going to learn, how I went from taking zero DTE 3x losses to very few losses in several months, how to identify the strikes and strike prices you'll be using and how it's going to increase your chances of profitability, how best to mitigate a trade that is threatened, what your capital requirements should be to manage in the money, out of the money credit spreads, and the best way to widen spreads to gain an edge on a position that may be threatened. I want you to stay with me until the end. We have about 70 slides that I want to go through. So stay with me until the end. There's a bonus for those of you who uh, stay on. And also, I uh, just want to ask you to turn off all your distractions. We're going to we're going to be going through a lot of detailed information here that you're going to be able to use. And also, if you could hold your questions till the end, that way we can get through all the uh, all the material and hopefully you can answer your own questions as we go through there. But if not, uh, I promise you we will answer all your questions that you have uh, to make sure that you're that you're solid there. So number one, you're interested in learning new strategies that'll take your performance, your trading performance to the next level so that you can finally leave that nine to five career behind. Reason number two is you've seen, heard about, read about others making money trading and you know you can do it too, but you're just not seeing your account grow fast enough based on your goals. And number three, you've tried different trading strategies that you thought, okay, this is it only to discover, man, not, I'm just not getting to the place of consistent trading results. So out of those three, which one is most relates to you? One, interested in learning new strategies. Two, desire to see your account grow month after month. Or three, finding the right strategy that provides consistent returns. Okay, if you can just let me know in the chat session, that would be awesome. Uh, which one is best? Number one, two, or three? Three, 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 one, two, great. Awesome. Two, three, two, two, great. One, perfect. Okay, three, yep, yep, great. I think you're in the right place. Okay. <laughs> Hope you can turn all of this around and make it awesome for you guys. Okay, perfect. Thanks, guys, for the, uh, for the feedback there. I appreciate it. All right, so here is me with my wife in Puerto Rico. I have five kids there in the middle and an MBA program uh, on the right-hand side a long time ago. So just a regular guy trying to make a living, a trading and loving my life actually in the meantime. All right. So let's talk about mindset here because this is really important. Imagine what it would feel like if most of your trades were winners month after month and it would be confirmed by watching the size of your account grow at the same time. Also, becoming the trader that no longer takes large losses but consistently trades according to a plan that is profitable over time, allowing you to grow your account month over month. And I'll show you, I'll share with you guys the performance of this. And, and I'm and I'm telling you, you can do it too. If I can do it, you can do it. So hang in there. Uh, we're going to, we're going to make it good for you guys. Okay. So let's first talk about an SPX credit spread, because these are the trades that I use in order to gain income month over month. It's a SPX credit spread. So a credit spread is a combination of two puts and two calls where the put or call that that is sold is more expensive than the put or call that is bought. So basically when you put on this trade, you're selling it, you're getting a credit for selling that trade. So you sell it and then you buy it back at the end. And that's how credit spreads work. So you're selling the 4050 in this example and buying the 4040 put, okay? And that's called a vertical spread. And this gives you what is a credit and it's a high probability trade. It's basically considered a high probability trade. So all that's good. However, there's Another side to this too. So let's talk about risk reward. And risk reward on a credit spread is probably one of the worst in the trading realm. So what you're doing is you're collecting 50 cents in this case. So it's 50 times 100, which is $50. And then your risk reward is basically you have to put out $1,000 minus the $50, right, that you bring in. 
So you're risking $950 basically to get a $50 reward for that. Okay. However, again, this is a high probability trades and, and 80 to 90% of your trading is going to be profitable, right? It's the other side, the risk management side that you need to worry about and how to, and how to manage that. So let's go on and talk about one of the major profitability factors for why this trade is a high probability trade. This is the decay of options, or actually this is a, uh, a call, call option and the journey that it takes for its life. So from 68 days to 33 days, the rate of decay is 34%. From 33 days to five days, the rate of decay is 57%. And from five days to expiration is 100%. Now you can imagine it's five days to expiration. If we go down to zero, that decay rapidly goes down in value. And so it's the fastest way to, uh, to gain income in a decaying uh, scenario for credit spreads. So let's talk about the other profitability factors. So we talked about decay, you know, and that's theta implied volatility. So volatility, you want to enter a trade when it's the volatility is high and exit the trade when the volatility is low. Now I place a trade in the first five minutes of the trading day around 9.30 to 9.35. The reason I do that is because generally, most of the time, the volatility at that time is the highest during the trading session. After the trading session, maybe towards the end, there are times that there's volatility that increases at that time, but most of the time the volatility is concentrated at the very first five minutes to 10 minutes of the trading day. And that's when I put on the trade, okay? Because I want to take advantage of that volatility. Theta, we just talked about, that's one of the Greeks, and it measures the rate of decline of the value of the option during that passage of time. And then profitability number three is the market direction. Okay, so if you can get the market direction right every time on these trades, then uh, you're going to be profitable. So a market trending away from your position will cause the premium to price price to drop. And if you enter this trade at the market, you know, when it moves, it moves against you or in the direction of the credit spread, you will see the premium uh, price increase significantly, but as long as it stays within the, that range that you have, it will remain profitable. So you can have a losing trade all through the session, but have a prop, you know, make it profitable as long as it stays in that range. So let's talk about some of the routines that I go through, actually risk management, and then we'll talk about the routines. So number one is always trade with a plan. Number two, determine max loss and max and, and risk reward before entering trade. Now, now we talked about that already, how to manage these trades so that you don't get in trouble. Trade no more than 20% capital on these trades. Okay, so don't go above. Always keep 80% cash in your account to trade these positions. And I understand and realize that a lot of you may not be able to, but that's the best way to trade these trades and, and be uh, profitable. Do not allow more than 2% loss based on trading capital at risk. And that way it keeps you solvent. And for highly trending markets, position trades that uh, you know, you want to follow the trend. Uh, size your trades to ensure emotions are not part of the decision-making process. I always say trade small and trade often. So let's go through the pre and pro post-market routine. Review the areas of support and resistance. That's really important as a trader uh, where those are. Review the U, uh, U.S. dollar for price action. Uh, U.S. dollar, you know, is if the dollar is moving higher, it, it puts pressure on the SPX just because of the, you know, the way that does its uh, pricing. OK, when they when they sell goods uh, to outside companies, uh, review the 10 year Treasury. If the Treasury bonds are moving higher, basically there's competition for cash. And that also puts pressure on uh, on your positions. Review ES futures because those trade basically 24 seven other than, you know, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, and that gives you a good trend of where the market's going. Review the VIX level. VIX is the volatility index for the SPX. Uh, and so it's good to know where that is when you're, when you're trading. Uh, and then determine uh, your credit spread positions when you place them uh, so that you're ready to place them right when you enter the market. Okay. And that's really specifically mostly for zero DTE. Okay. Post-market routine. Determine if rules were broken and why. Determine if risk was within acceptable levels. Determine if your losses were within acceptable ranges. Determine if tweaks or adjustments are needed for your trade plan. And you always want to be, be on top of that as well. Update your trade journal with your findings. And it's good to have a trade journal just to understand how you do and what you're doing and maybe uh, understanding what mistakes you make and, and what you're good at.
as well. All right, before we get into the nuts and bolts of the, the actual trade itself, I'm gonna talk about pattern day trades. Uh, and this is really, really important if you're not aware, and I'm sure most people are, are aware of this, but I wanna, I wanna cover this uh, so that you don't get caught, okay? So what is it? It's the buying and selling and selling and buying the same security in the same day, uh, and it initiates uh, days uh, trade from three trades to five trades, okay? So you can't trade more than actually more than three trades within a five day consecutive period. So you want to keep that in mind. All right. And not day trade more than that, or else your broker will restrict you to uh, basically just selling funds, selling uh, trades out uh, and not uh, and not buying and not uh, initiating trades. What can happen if your account value is below twenty five thousand? Your account can be restricted to only selling current holdings all right so so make sure you understand that now we have a way of avoiding that okay and i'm going to share that uh, information with you for how you can do a very very similar trade that doesn't have pdt restrictions and you can do this all day long without a $25,000 account and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes so how to avoid uh, pattern day trade is limit trades to one trade, one trade, three days, time, three days a week, manage trades for multiple accounts, trade wide iron condors to allow them and, and allow them to expire, trade ES future spreads since those are not subject to PD T. And options on futures is, is what we're going to talk about too in this session so that you're aware that you have an alternative to SPX credit spreads. So let's go through the specific strategy of managing SPX zero DTE trades. Okay. And we're going to talk about out of the money, in the money, and same strikes, lower strikes, widened spreads. So we're going to talk about all of that and how you can maneuver using uh, different tactics so that uh, you don't get caught in a big loss. So I'm going to start with the criteria for this. And this is general, this is basically your trade plan or the trade plan that I use. Uh, enter within the first one to 10 minutes of the market opening using a five to 30 wide spread. So there are different ways to, to trade these. I trade 10 wide, but, but there, are, there are traders that trade five wide to 30 wide and even greater. Uh, it's just it's basically up to you okay, to do that. Wider spreads provide a greater distance to the market. It causes less risk. And I'm going to show you a graph of that, you know, specifically so that you're aware of what the difference is in trading five wide, 10 wide, 15 wide, and 20 wide. So premium should be between 45 to 90. That's where to me is a sweet spot. It's usually between a five to seven delta on the you know with with uh with that with that greek uh and uh it's worked out for me pretty well all right uh, i know a lot of traders also widen their positions and still use you know 50 cents to 70 cents uh, and it's basically to reduce risk so closing uh the short strike to take profit you can do it by just closing it for 10 cents or you can actually close the short strike for five cents and that will still be a it will still be a day trade but you can collect more profit on this okay a lot of people you know we let them expire uh in our group you know, I, I try really hard to uh, to allow them to expire. And that way you don't have to worry about uh, day trades. Expiration is just the other way to uh, to let it uh, to let it go away, uh, that that position. All right. When a trade is threatened. Now, the most common way that that people use this is to use 2x or, or 3x the short strike as a stop loss. Now, you know, I use it mostly for bear spreads just because uh, bear spreads are, you know, can get much closer to the market than bears than than bull spreads, and that's that's basically what I've been doing. And I typically roll the bull spreads so that uh, that way you can roll it out, and it's and it's a much easier process to do rather than bear spreads. Okay, bear spreads you can get caught, and I'm actually in a roll right now where I've done it. I think it's I think we're in our twelfth roll, you know, for a for a bear spread, and that's just crazy right? But uh, we're getting ahead of it finally. <laughs> so, but I can tell you that I'm not going to do that again. I'm not going to, I'm not going to be uh, rolling uh, uh, bear spreads anymore. Okay. So you want to roll near or at the money uh, one to two days out. If you're going to roll the trade, I would say that you want to roll it 
before that you before you get in the money or at the money. You want to you want to get it basically at least five to five to ten points away from the market uh, in order to get a, a decent roll. And again, we'll we'll go through that uh, in in great detail. All right. Now uh, rolling in the money, you can widen the spread, but still it is tough to uh, to manage after that. All right. So do it ahead of time and your life will be easier. <laughs> okay, so this is a, a graph, okay, for the distance of the market for both a uh, call spread, which are, which are you know, is in green, and uh, the bull spread, which is in red, okay? Now, you can see here with the five wide on a call spread, you, you're, you're less than 1% away from the market. Uh, with the with the bull spread, you're 1.2 percent. Okay. Now move to a 10 wide, and you can see here that the that the uh, width, you know, going from five to 10, dramatically different. You know, especially on the bull side on the bull spread, where you go from 1.2 to 1.7 percent. Okay. And then if you go to 15, you get diminishing returns basically. Now you only get two percent more on the bull spread uh, in order to you know take that um, uh, take that further away from the market. Now, when you go to 20, 25, 30, it, it really, really diminishes it. And it just doesn't make sense to um, to put on that trade uh, because you're you're just you're just inching to the you know, to get closer to them or further away from the market. And it's not doing a lot of good, actually. OK. All right. So this is this. This one here is in a 22 VIX, okay? It's a lower volatility environment. Now let's go to a 27 VIX, right? So just five more points, and you can see here how how much greater is it is uh, going from 22 to 27, all right? So, uh, and you'll you'll see it once you start placing these trades in a in a lower environment, lower you know volatility environment. You'll see that the you know positioning of these really make a difference uh, with the with the volatility. So let's go to a one day DTE instead of zero DTE, and you can see here that the the width or the width or the distance from the market is actually lower on a one DTE than it is on a zero DTE. That's a pretty amazing, you know, because you get 24 hours of decay. But it's actually less if you trade uh, one DTE rather than zero DTE. So that's that's really the the power of zero DTE. Okay, uh, so it's almost not really worth doing during one DTE with uh, with SPX. And and then again, I'm going to show you the difference between one, you know the SPX trade and the options on futures trades and how much better that is. So let's go into the specifics on some of these trades. So this one here is zero DTE. It's a bull spread. And here is when it gets, you know, when it's threatened. And so you can see here that the market is at 38, 3580 here. All right. It was, we placed the 3575, 3565 put spread uh, uh, and it's five points from being breached. Okay. So the, the premium has risen to $2 and 45 cents and it's actually passed already the three X mark to, uh, to close the trade. All right. So now you can initiate the roll using the same strikes and it gives you a dollar seventy-five credit. So now you're rolling that to the next day, okay? And you're collecting a dollar seventy-five. Well, you know the the trade is still basically threatened in, at that point, but you're you're collecting a dollar seventy-five. This is what you would do if you just use the same the same strikes, okay? So now let's go into another scenario here. Let's use a bear spread, okay? Kind of the same situation, but it's a bear spread. And you can see here that instead of $1.75, you're collecting $1.15. So right then and there, you can see that that it's it's not as good as a bull spread. So let's go into a bull spread again. And in, and in this one, we're actually going to change the strikes and move it out one day. So we're moving it out one day. And you can see here, you know, we can still collect a $0.35 cent credit and still get 25, uh, <clears throat> 25 points of distance for this trade. And it's just a way to roll it and get some more distance. And maybe you don't have to uh, roll it again. But 
generally speaking, you usually do. Okay. And uh, when you, when you roll that trade and you want to roll it again, if, if you're going to roll it again, you're going to roll it so that you're rolling it out of the money. Okay. To get further distance. All right. That's just another scenario. Okay. Bear spread again. Now at this point, we are widening it again, basically roll down. We're not widening it. We're, we're just changing the strikes on this one, but on this one, in order to get the 30 cent credit, uh, it only went 15 points basically. Okay. It's not rolled 25. I'm sorry. It's, it's 15. So you get 15 points away uh, from that, uh, from that position. Right. So in this case here, we're doing a bull spread. Now we're rolling down and we're widening the, the trade. So we widen the trade down to from 35.75 down to 35.30. So that is quite a distance to get, you know, to get a distance from the market and you still collect a 15 cent credit. So if you plan to roll the trade, the best way to do it and to get more distance is to widen it by one. And now by adding the additional five points, you're going to add an additional $500 per contract of margin. Okay. That's what, that's what it's going to require you to do in order to get that additional margin. Okay. So just keep that in mind. And so here you have a thousand dollars. If you roll it, you're going to, you're going to be, you're going to have a margin of $1,500 in order to, to manage that trade. So here, you know, we were able to roll it 45 points down, uh, credit on it. Okay, now a bear spread widened for the next day. Okay, here we went down to 35 cent credit, but we were only able to roll it for 25 points. So again, you wanna keep that in mind when you're thinking about rolling a trade and you know what you're gonna be getting into uh, so that you know how to position it. So here we have a bull spread, same strikes. Now we go out two days. Now here we use the same strikes and instead of the 175 that we had, it gives you 40 cent more credit, you know, in order to roll it out two days, okay? So, so that additional credit uh, compensates for the, uh, the two days out. Right, bull spread, roll down and widen two days. Here you get uh, 35 cents and it gives you uh, 60 points for a uh, 35 cent credit. And this is going out two days uh, in this case. Now we roll down and widen two days for a bull spread, you get a 15 cent credit. Uh, and this is a two day roll. And uh, we end up with 100 points away with widening it by five points. So that way, if you want to roll it instead of one day to two days, you get much more return for widening it and then getting a lot, a lot more distance from the market. So that's probably a, a really, really good scenario uh, for you to, to do, because if you roll it two days, you know, and it gets threatened on the second day, you can still roll it again and get greater distance, you know, instead of waiting the two days. All right. So you have some options there. Okay, bull spread, uh, same strikes, next day, zero DTE. And in this case here, this one was rolled and it was in the money when it was rolled. And you can see here, on a, even on a bull spread, uh, you're not going to get, if you, if you want to roll this trade, you're not going to get a credit on it. You're going to pay a debit on it. And that's why, you know, I always say when you, when you roll these, you want to roll them when you're out of the money. Okay. Once you get in the money, then it, it, it gets very, very costly to, to manage. So bull spread, same strikes. Next day, we've got rolling it down in the money compared to out of the money. Uh, you can see here that both credit on there went up to $6.10. And then in order to, to, to roll it down, you're going to have to pay $3.30, you know, to, uh, you know, basically it'll, it'll cost you for that. So I, I want to I want you to I want to make sure you guys, you know, sync uh, really understand and 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 if you're going to roll these trades, don't do it when it's in the money. All right, do it well before. Okay, so you really want to be cognizant of that. Uh, here, this is a uh, in the money bull spread, roll down and widen. Here, we're able to salvage it, you know, you, for basically zero, but you only got uh, 15 points downside protection here. So, in the money. You got something, but it's it's still you know you you're gonna you you're not gonna have to pay for it, 
but you're not getting a lot of distance on, on this. Okay, in this case here, let's look at a one week out on this. Okay, so this one here, uh, we're, we're rolling, lower the strikes and push it out one week. And here you, you do get uh, additional distance for this. Basically, you're going from 36.90 to 36.20 uh, on this, on this roll. Okay. By, by pushing it out one week out, roll down and widened one week for this one. Uh, this one's out of the money and widening the trade for one week. Uh, we get basically, I think it's 125 points. Is it? 30? Yeah. We, we, we get more than a hundred points on this. Uh, if we, if we push it out one week. Okay. So I'm going to give you, uh, some examples here on some trades. Uh, that I did and uh, just basically show you the real uh, scenario of what, what can happen when you're rolling a trade. And this is probably the worst case scenario that you can go through. And I wanted to share that with you so that you know what you're getting into. Here, I put on a trade and this is when I was trading 15 wide uh, positions and I collected 70 cents uh, for this trade. The market went down and basically going against me. And so what I did was I rolled the trade from 4125, 4110 to 4100, 4085 and collected uh, $1 for that. And then on the next day, so I uh, closed that position for $1.70 uh, on the following day. Okay. So that's, that's a, that's one scenario of, of rolling a trade and basically collecting more than you plan to, uh, by rolling it. Okay. So that's the good side. Okay. So here, this was actual, this was an actual trade that I did on May 18th. Uh, and I want to show you how this could possibly go bad on you. So this was a trade that I, I rolled, uh, a couple of times started with five, 518 and you can go back and look at the market and see where where that was uh so i put on a trade i, I put on a put spread it was uh 39 90 39 50 39 uh, uh 35 put spread for 60 cents and then i put on a call spread 4125 4140 for 50 cents and then added to the uh put spread another uh 60 cents uh basically same strikes and then uh, close the call spread for 15 cents. And you can see here that the market continued moving down, didn't stop. <laughs> so what I did was I rolled the trade from 39.50, 39.35 to 39.45, 39.20. Okay, so I widened the spread and I did collect uh, 75 cents. The next day I had to roll the trade again and this time went from 39.45, 39.20 to 39.30, 39.90. So I widened the spread quite a bit and got a five cent debit, basically break even. Then on the 20th, I bought to close the 39.30, 39.90 for 30 cents and was able to close that position. What I wanted to share here with you was the cost of this, okay, for me to do this. So it's, it's, it's really nice to be able to you know, roll a trade, roll it again, and, and finally get, you know, finally get a gain on it. But you have to understand the pain in what it's going to cost you in terms of margin. So the first one I did, I had $1,500. It was a, a two contract position. So, you know, I had, I had $3,000 in order to, uh, to, you know, to, to manage that trade. First roll I did after we put on the position, it went from 15 wide to 25 wide. So I widened it by 10 points. So instead of a margin of 3000, it turned out with two positions, it turned out to be 5,000. And again, yeah, I, I'm still making money on the position, you know, with, with the credits on the second roll, I went from 25 wide to 40 wide. Now I'm in a position that I am having to use $8,000 of margin in order to, to keep this uh, uh, position solvent. And then finally, I was able to close it out for $2 and 60 cents minus the 30 cents that I paid for it. So I, I, I basically collected $2 and 30 cents. What could have gone wrong? The market could have con continued to go down and then I would have had a larger max loss and I would have had to add additional margin in order to uh, not have to pay for those rolls. And I've done it both ways. I've, I've, you know, I've used debits, you know, so that I don't use that much margin and, and collected it and, uh, you know, and it's, and it's worked out, but I just want to be clear and make sure that you understand what you're getting into 
if you you know go off and, and, and manage these roles and the, the amount of capital that you need to use in order to do this correctly. If you have a lot of money in your account, it's great. You can do this and you know use other positions to to collect you know collect additional credit. And we do that in the group as well. But again, I, I just want to make sure that you understand the details of, of you know, doing this and, and uh, collecting credit. Okay, so that's, that's the, uh, those are the zero DTE trades with SPX. Now I want to share with you ES options on futures trades, okay? So I'm bringing this in because I know that, you know, I trade with a lot of traders that don't have a $25,000 account and they use this instead of SPX. And I'm going to show you actually the benefits of this scenario. So entry on these, uh, enter spreads within the first hour of the overnight session. So I mostly use this for one DTE and it's worked out really, really well for me. You know, the reason this really, really works. So I enter usually around the first hour of the overnight session or around two o'clock in the afternoon. After profits taken, I confirm tops and bottoms and re-enter a trade. You basically close them, place them again. Okay, so you actually are taking a loss when the trade gets threatened. But the premium I use is between 115 and 140. Sometimes I use less than that, depending on you know what the market conditions are. And then take profit, I use uh, 10 cents or five cents for each spread to take it off. Now remember, you know, or expiration, I, I typically don't let this expire just because uh, there's opportunity costs to uh, to put on additional trades, you know, especially if they if they expire or they get down to 10 cents in the middle of the day. Trade is threatened. You can use a 2x or 3x sh uh, short strike, just you know, as a stop loss. And I do this. In fact, I did it today, uh, and then put on another trade that's further away from the market to keep it going. Rolling the trade using a condor within 20 points of the breach. So you can actually roll this trade by closing the position and adding it so that you get greater distance to the market, but you, you can't really roll these trades, okay? Close a threatened trade and open a new trade with a net credit. Sometimes you don't get the net credit, but you mitigate the losses, right? Here's our performance for zero DTE for SPX. In February, we're actually doing really well. Really well. In August and September, I wanted to go with five wide to go through that experience with the new ways that I was uh, rolling these trades using uh, five contracts you can see here in August and September, it did it did really well. But normally, and I had a bad month in uh, November, but this is the actual performance that, that I have typically using one contract. And, and February is, uh, is has been pretty profitable as well. Okay, I want to compare the SPX to ES in this. It might allow you to, instead of trading SPX, trade ES on this. So, so number one, overnight risk. So SPX, there's overnight risk because you cannot close a trade unless you have a different broker. But typically you can't close the trades overnight. And so there's no overnight risk for ES because you can close and open trades uh, overnight with ES. The multiplier is 100. So you can, you, you know, you see with SPX, there's 100 contracts per 100 shares per contract for SPX. And for ES, there's 50 shares per contract. So it's half the amount. OK, so you have to get that through your head. And, and so you're you're risking less with one contract for ES. There is greater margin requirements and ES has less margin requirement. And that doesn't have to do with 50. Uh, it's just the cost of the trade and how much the requirement is that the broker provides that makes the difference. So there's less margin that you have to use for ES. Ability to roll the trade into later expirations that you can do that for SPX. You cannot do that for ES. Cash settled for SPX, futures contract settled for, for ES. And so if you have a position completely in the money past the long strike, it'll settle as a loss, all right? Basically a cash loss. If it's in between the spread, they'll assign you a futures contract to get that settled. Okay, and that's just how, how it works. Commissions fees are less expensive with SPX and the fees are more expensive with ES. However, because of the margin requirement, it's actually less costly to trade ES than SPX. So here is an example comparing SPX to ES. And the reason that the 3840, 3830 is different from 30, 3860, 3850 is because of the futures contract. Okay. So to get it to make it like apples to apples, 
you know, you have to use the market numbers between ES and SPX. So here you, you see it's one contract. Remember, it's a for SPX, it's 100. And for ES, it's 110. So you got to divide that by two. So you're actually trading not 110, but you're trading actually 55 cents on this position. So the requirement for buying power is 921 here. And this one is 506. Now I'm going to move this to make it more compatible. And the best way to do it is to use a, uh, yeah, you can see here the, the, the max gain here, 77 and 51. Okay. So now let's look at apples to apples basically on this trade. So instead of using 10 wide, I use 15 wide. Now that gives you apples to apples comparison because 160 divided by two is 80. So you're actually collecting $80 on this position because it's widened and I'm using one contract. So SPX 100 multiplier, ES 50 multiplier. And that's why the, the numbers are different here. So now what you're getting is basically the same credit for using a 15 wide instead of a, a 10 wide. So you're basically using the same amount of margin or less margin to get the same results. So here, 921 margin requirement, and for the same amount of money, you get 762. So that's why I'm saying you're actually utilizing less margin so you can put on bigger trades compared to SPX, and that's where the commissions come into account. So it's, it's actually less costly to trade ES, and it has a lot of other benefits as well, including no PDT. Okay. So hopefully this was a value to you. And I want to share with you our, our bonus here. And again, I'm going to get to your questions. So would you like to follow our trades while you're learning using our short-term strategies outlined in this session here, guys? So we have a trade alert service. Okay. And I wanted to share that with you. And we actually do a lot of teaching in our group. We want to make sure that you're actually understanding and learning what you're doing so that you become a better trader. And so of course, you get two things in one. And not only that, you get a guarantee of making money as well. So we talked about interested in learning new strategies, desire to see your account grow, find the right strategy. All three of these things can be done. When I set out to share this, this is what I wanted to do. I just didn't want to throw trade alerts at people and take the trade and make money, you know, and you're a zombie. You know, I, I want to really make sure that you understand what you're doing and learn this. And a lot of people come into our trade alert service, they spend a month or two, they learn the strategies and they go off on their own. Okay. So you learn while you, while you earn. So the question is, are you going to keep doing what you're doing and hope that one day something's going to stick or are you going to focus on getting an edge using profitable trades, high profitability trades, and do something that really, really works? This is what you have to do. Now, it's not just the trade or the strategy. It's not just that, but it's a no quit attitude, a commitment to, to making this right, using discipline with stops and, and entry points and exit points and having an edge or, or multiple edges. Okay. This is what allows traders to become successful. So we have a trade alert service. We integrated that with Telegram. So when I place a trade in my account, it automatically goes into a trade alert service using Telegram. And basically there's no errors, except if I make an error right in the trade. And sometimes I do. So most of our trades are like that. Some of them we don't. But most of our trades using uh, futures trades, ES futures and SPX, we use those for our trade alert service because it's it's error free. So whether you're getting started or already successful, this is a great way to learn if, if you haven't done it, to grow in what you're doing and learn new strategies. Also, we have two different types of signals here. One is to have a two way conversation. And the other is a one-way conversation. So the two-way conversations are to get questions answered, uh, learn what you're doing. And the one way is the trade alert. So there's no ambiguity. The trade alerts come in. They're very, very clear in what you have to do. And it's very easy to follow. We encourage people to ask questions, to learn, especially when we're rolling trades, you know, because that's probably the more complex uh, part of this, of this service. You know, but once you get the hang of that, it's pretty easy. So we have a lot of great uh, success stories here uh, with Marianne, a 7DTE trader, Bruce that was with us for a long, long, long time, and uh, Glenn uh, loves 7DTE as well. Uh, go Dave, Dave has been with us for for a few months, uh, and he's and he's gone from 3K to 31K just trading 
well, zero DTE mostly, and then some some uh, seven DTE trades as well. But I want to share with you, not only that, is that we have a guarantee. If you subscribe for one month and lose money by following my trades, I'll refund you the subscription times 125, you know, 125%. So I've never had to give this money away uh, because everybody makes money. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I just want to let you know that our SOS trade alerts will be opening soon. We have to limit the number of subscribers that we let in, but if you join our free wait list, you will not be turned away. I promise. So click on the link below where it says my options and futures trade alerts and sign up. Hope to see you there. Fiber trades as well. So we have professional traders in here, right? This, this is what they do. This is what they do uh, for life and they share their trades. So you get the 39 plan plus the subscriber trades. In the other trade, you have a day trader, you get zero DTE, seven DTE uh, in addition to that and premium trades. And then the full-time trader, you get uh, basically futures trades and everything else. So what do you get here? So you should be able to see the link to join. So this is for you. If you want to learn a step-by-step -step process to gain income in a market that goes up and down, you want to finally break the series of losses, and by the way, we have live rooms that are open every day from uh, 9.30 to, to uh, 4 o'clock. And we teach you the Elliott Wave. We teach you ABCD types of trades as well. And you earn constant income that sets you apart from other traders. So you have access to $20 off for life, professional traders group in the subscriber uh, chat groups. We have training and education channel as well. So we have that aside from that if you join. You'll get an email and we have an education portal uh, that you can learn specific strategies that we do. Automatic signals that come in seconds of the trade for most of our trades. Trade entry, fill price, price target after fill, how to roll. And we announce that and, and let you know what's going to happen. And my guarantee that you're going to make money. It's just a winning, winning way to go. So again, I'm going to look here for the questions who is like on tell who is it like on oh telegram is great it's a very very uh, powerful tool uh, it's very quick much faster than ios how far strike price should uh, the spx be from zero dte at least five to ten points away and for 70 te i use 40 points away and actually i rolled a trade this morning that was about 50 points away just because i did not want it to get close to in the money and i was able to roll it much further down and added a uh, a call spread up so hopefully this was a value to you guys. I don't see a lot of questions here. This All right. I think I've covered the questions. You guys make sure you see the offer. It's just a great way to have an edge to learn and to make money. Thanks for your time. And I will see you in a trade alert service. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.